I started recording and then I got a little body of music record. I was like, okay, what do I do now? You know, <laughs> what's, what's next? And verbatim, he said, well, you start a band, you idiot. And that had never <laughs> occurred. That had never occurred to me. Bring it back for you. This podcast is about you, your journey in music. And of course, we can talk about uh, the new coffee shop that you opened up. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> Just actually that recently. Uh, that's What's the that struts. The, oh, the struts. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I was actually had the opportunity to be the first DJ in the country to play them on the radio. And then they ended up selling 500,000 oh, copies. Great. <laughs> wow. That's great. That's so cool. That's a lot of copies in this era, right? Right. It took them about Jeez, five years, but I, I love those guys. Yeah, and I appreciate them. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Yes, thanks sir. for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course, I can't wait to hear your story in this this crazy music industry. <laughs> oh, once upon a time, once upon a time. I mean, I cut my teeth uh, in the '90s in Seattle. Um, it, it hit the ground running. I mean, in the late '80s, I uh, I was surrounded by a lot of guys, uh, including my brother and and his mm -hmm. uh, his colleagues, his peers. That were all all this music was being made, and guys were writing songs, and that to me was the most fascinating thing I have ever heard of was writing a song. I, I, I plinked and plunked on the guitar a little bit, but I, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't a great player. I wasn't a learned, a, a, a classical player or anything. I just beat around on the thing a little bit. And uh, I was so inspired by songwriters. How does that happen? What, what takes place to connect the dots on that? And, uh, and that's, where, that's where it started. I, I, I had an opportunity to uh, write a bunch of music and I was on an adventure. I, I, I was sailing around the world on a boat and I was in the middle of the ocean and had some really profound experiences as you're gonna do when you're out mm -hmm. on a boat sailing around the ocean and you're a young man in your twenties. Um, and uh, I, I wrote a couple of songs and that turned into a couple more. And then when I came back to the States, um, things were in full speed ahead in Seattle, you know? Mm -hmm. And and my brother was, uh, you know, my brother was, uh, you know, he was he was right at the forefront of it. He was the leader of it all. And and uh, I just I was around him and Andy a lot and uh, Andy Wood. And uh, I uh, I played a few of my little songs for him. And I was like, what do I do now? You know, what's next? And he said, well, go. And he taught me, my, my brother Chris taught me how to record on a four track that he had in his little cupboard in his house. And, and, and uh, so I, I recorded a few songs and then, you know, he and I bought a, a big eight track reel to reel with a really cool board, a real pro setup. And, you know, his band w was rehearsing in my house and, and uh, I just, it, I started recording and then I got a little body of music recorded. I was like, okay, what do I do now? You know, what's, <laughs> what's next? And verbatim, he said, well, you start a band, you idiot. And that had never really occurred. <laughs> That had never occurred to me. That had never occurred to me. How simple. Okay, that makes sense. So um, there was certainly no lack of players. Um, I'm sure and, in Seattle at I, the time, started, right? <laughs> yeah, I started a band and, you know, we rehearsed and, and uh, we rehearsed for about six months and learned some songs and, and got our first show and um, 1991, May 1st, 1991. May 1st or May 31st? Mm -hmm. May 31st, 1991 at the uh, Swan in Pioneer Square in Seattle. And we hit the ground running. I mean, we had, we, by, the, by the end of that show, we had a following and we had a manager and, and we were off to the races. Wow. And it was never, never a matter of, of if, and that was, you know, that we would get a deal. And that, that was between me and my brother. It was never an if, it was a when, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and having him in my corner and as my mentor, um it was uh you know it was always the, the exposure was great you know we were, we were we were under a microscope but it was a fun microscope to be under because oh, of i'm his, sure you uh, were uh, right just because yeah, people are probably yeah. constantly comparing you to what's what sound oh, yeah. was doing and we were apples and oranges i mean we were sort of we were sort of tom petty meets the grateful dad meets <laughs> peter cornell and his wild adventures you sure. know um we were a kind of a jammy jam band. We were a hippie band. I was certainly more hippie than I was anything in those days. And uh, so we were very different. And, and it was always my purposeful uh, uh, motive to make sure that I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't 
except for having the same name, I tried, you know, I, I was always making sure that I wasn't trading on the mm -hmm. name that, that, that it was because, you know, we were out there and, and we were slinging um, legitimately and, and we did, we worked really hard. We mm -hmm. worked really hard. I just wasn't a very good songwriter in those days. You know, I didn't have that tune, that song. And in those days it was, you know, it was about the radio, getting on the radio, getting on the radio, you know, mm -hmm. and that radio hit. I heard that so many times, <laughs> that phrase, that radio hit, you know, I didn't have it. I was, I wrote seven minute songs, you know, they all had five minute lead guitar solos in them. Sure. You know? I love that. I love that kind of music, man. Right. I loved it. So, uh, you know, that was, that was me in the nineties and we played up and down the coast and into Canada and East, you know, into the, the, the towns in the Northwest and, you know, into Montana and all those places. And, and we did very well. We just didn't break to the big leagues, you know? Sure. But I mean, so, there's something to be said about having a long career versus having one oh, yeah. song on the radio. And I've, I've actually yeah. talked to a lot of artists that have been in that similar predicament or actually a lot of artists that have either have famous family members, famous fathers or famous, you yeah. know, and it's like, I feel it's to me, it's like, I know a lot of people are like, Oh, well, you know, you already had a, you, you had the opportunity because your dad or your brother or your sister or whatever is already yeah. in the, in the scene. But it's like, in, in reality, you have to have the songs and you have to, you know, have the drive or it doesn't matter. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Who yeah. cares that your your brother was yeah. Chris or your dad yeah. was in Kiss or what, whatever it was. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I wish my dad was in Kiss. Um, I had a chance to chat with two, or Sophie Sim, sister and um, Paul Stanley's kid, too. So it was pretty Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. They're both cool. in music. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was a great run and, and it, it was a springboard to my next thing, you know, which was, uh, I moved to New York and, and reinvented myself and had a really great run, you know, did it made a, made the best record and did the best work that I'd ever done. I learned how to be a better guitar player, a better songwriter and a better singer. Mm -hmm. And I put out a great record. It, our band was called black market radio. And, and we toured that on that the... record for a couple Three or four years. Is that the band that you're in with your sister, two of your sisters, right? Or is that the different No, band? that was my first band. That was, oh, that that was, was your my first, first band. band. That was an inflatable soul. Yeah, my, I always had this, you know, vision in my head of, of backup singers. Um, like, you know, I, I, I love the Stones. I always had this great backup band, backup mm -hmm. singers. And God, who else? I mean, there's so many like that, that. And I had that vision and it ended up becoming my sisters. They That's just so were around cool. and they're like, hey, we could, we want to do that. And so we just rehearsed in my house and. And yeah, they were in the band and, and, uh, you know, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of success and, uh, you know, on, on to New York, I did black market radio and then I did a solo record after that. And, you know, I ended up getting some songs published in, in, in television programs. And I, I just co-wrote a song, um, with, uh, with Kevin Martin from Candlebox. Oh it's yeah. On their new record. That's yeah, so rad. Yeah. I did read that. Yeah. That's so, those guys are great too. I had a chance to uh, They're great, interview man. a couple of the guys from Candlebox. So cool. And a couple of the guys uh, are in another band. I can't remember with Don. Uh, oh, Don, Don Miggs. Miggs. Yeah. 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 I can't. Yeah. Kevin's the been name doing is... some stuff with them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a cool band too. They just released a record, but that's awesome. So yeah. it sounds like you're still writing and, and, and absolutely heavily involved yeah. in the music scene. Uh, absolutely. I've, I, I mean, I've got a, I've got a couple projects going that aren't the coffee business. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I've got, I, I've got a couple things doing. I, you know, I'd like to do a little more writing with Kevin because I think that song came out great, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's a good rock song. Their record's great, by the way. I, I don't know if you've, if you've gotten it yet or if it's, I know it's not out yet, um, but yeah, I think they put, it is, wasn't it supposed to come out last year, I think. And then it, yeah. And then obviously, yeah. 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 But it is a great rock record. I mean, it's a real record. It plays like a record for me. Mm -hmm. That's and, awesome. You know, I think it's 11, 11 songs. And, it, you know, I mean, I go seven or eight songs deep before um, before I, I hit something where, I, where I, I might not be my, you know, my favorite favorite. But, God, mm -hmm. man, there's so many great songs on that record. Kevin shows lyrics and, and vocals like he, you know, his best ever, I think, you know. That's and so he's done cool. some great records. Oh, it's yeah. really cool. And I, we had a, a grand opening here at at, uh, at our coffee business on the fifth of June, and and Brian Quinn, who's the lead guitar player in that band, mm -hmm. um, he flew in from Philly and sat in with me. And I hadn't played for a long time, and I've been trying oh, to play rad. with Brian for like fifteen years. We were uh, we two our bands toured together uh, um, 
when I was in black market radio um, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. And uh, um, I'd always wanted to play with him. He's a great player. And I really liked him. I, we were really good. His band was called Foster Child at, in those days. And uh, they were out of Pen Pennsylvania. And uh, so we finally got to play together. And it was really amazing. It was really, he's such a great player. And, awesome. and it makes me a better player you know, when I play with somebody who's good like that. So mm -hmm. it was really fun. I've, I've got, I'm going to open for a candle box in uh, November in Seattle. Oh, oh you are. They're doing, I yeah. know they're playing yeah. in Nashville too. I saw. Um, they are. Yeah. They just did last week. I think. Or, or, yeah. They play. I think we were the first, it was the first show on their tour on this leg of their tour. Oh, they did already play. Um, I did see that they were coming up. Maybe, I, yeah. I, I don't know. They were here rehearsing. I, I'm not sure if they, uh, but I think their first show was here. Maybe not. Maybe it's on the next leg, but uh yeah, hopefully I'll get to see him. I was out of town for a minute when they were here, so I didn't get to see him but last week. But uh, yeah, so it was a show, me opening for them. I'm just do acoustic set opening for them um, in November, which was supposed to be last October. Um, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> sure. You know, I'm excited about that. Yeah, so it's going to be curious. close to my hometown. Yeah, I was going to ask you. So you started the the shop is here or in Nolensville, right? Or, or, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's here in Nashville area, surrounding area. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Nolansville is uh, is about five miles away from Brentwood. I live right on the corner of Brentwood, and we're we're in the same neighborhood here. It's about five minutes from my house. And uh, Nolansville is a historic. It's a super old little village that was founded in 1797, mm -hmm. and it's it's just it's blowing up. I don't know how else to say it. There's a lot of there's a lot of people moving here. There's a lot of uh, a lot of buildings and, and, and retail and, and, and residential being built here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really exploding. And it's, it's, you know, the whole region ha has yeah. done really well economically and, and certainly real estate wise. And <laughs> um, this particular little burg of Nolensville is really just, it's, it's right in the, in that stage of just, uh, of just happening. And, and mm -hmm. so we're, we feel really lucky, you know, mm -hmm. we, we got here and we opened up our shop here and, and we're doing really well. We're doing really, really well. My it's wife had a chance stuff. to go there. I don't know if she yeah, saw you. I met her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I no, thought I she. Yeah, yeah. I thought she met you. Yeah. She yeah. loved it. She kept ranting yeah. and raving about how rad it is. I'm. I want to yeah. know when. When did you get to Brentwood? How long have you lived in the area, and what took you here? Uh, we came here a couple years ago. We've been here okay. a little over two years, and um, there's a school here that's particularly good for um, our our uh, our boy who's starting fourth grade about oh, cool. an hour ago yeah oh yeah. oh yeah and, i know uh, my kids just i have a 13 year old who just started eighth grade uh yesterday yeah. and uh my yeah. kinder my five-year-old starts kindergarten well he had like his boot camp kindergarten boot yeah yeah camp. yeah school's bad and I, we'll find out who the teacher is today they do it a little different for kindergarten cool. but <laughs> yeah it's bizarre yeah. So, yeah, no, it's yeah, cool. that's and, awesome. And so, so, so you've been out here for, for a couple of years and how long has the coffee shop been around or the, the we, company uh, official official opening was June five. Um, but we really started, uh, we started putting the rubber to the road on it in January. So okay. we moved pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something I'd thought about doing for a long time. And, uh, the last couple of years that I was here, I, I was, you know, for all practical purposes, I was retired and mm -hmm. just working on some real, real estate stuff. And, um, and it just, it was time to, uh, to, to do something else. And, uh, I'd wanted to do this for a while and it was, it wasn't hard to do, especially with a wife who's a genius. And, uh, <laughs> I, um, she does all of the hard behind the scenes paperwork and numbers crunching and stuff. And I That's just, my to wife show up for this make, podcast. Make <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. If you know it wasn't for her, this thing would be sinking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The truth. So I, um, I get to, uh, once, once we started, we, once we opened and then I get to, to make coffee and be, uh, be the Cornell brother. And That's it's pretty, so cool. it's pretty good deal for me. It's a pretty good deal. So, and we are, we, we went into a shop that was a shop for the last couple of years and they, changed their brand a little bit and they they didn't need all the space they they had had when they opened um and so we uh we sublet a little spot and the idea seemed like a good idea and a, a local juice company that was looking for a spot so we've got three businesses inside this co-op market that mm -hmm. and the business model it plays very well for the community it's That's it so was cool. the right thing at the right time and it's it's got the right energy and we're all you know we're all good at what we do 
all three mm-hmm. companies. And, and so we're, we're enjoying just a, a really wonderful start to this thing. You know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled. I, uh, you know, I'm like ready to open the second one and, and which is going to happen <laughs> sooner than later, because we've had such a, a good successful opening, you know, uh-huh. and it's been, you know, that we've been embraced by the community and, you know, we're, we're working hard, but it's, it's worth every minute of it. When you own the company, it doesn't feel like you're going to work, you know? That's cool. Yeah. Can I make yeah. a suggestion? South Williamson County. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do what? South, South Williamson, Williamson County. County. <laughs> yeah. Like where, 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 at? where are you at? Out, uh, around Thompson station. Thompson station. Yeah. We're thinking that direction, you know, for sure. Uh, I know Brian sure. from Brian, uh, Brian head of uh, corn has a shop or not a shop, but he has like this therapeutic, like, place down here it does they do like hydro oh, really? massage and stuff yeah oh cool <laughs> in spring in hill, station? yeah, yeah it's spring- oh cool spring hill thompson yeah. station yeah yeah well, it's I interesting mean, it's like i'll talk to these people and there's so many people here in town like because i'm from we're from san diego california and we had never been yep. here we just wanted you know just super intrigued by everything and wanted to you know get a better bigger place for my family and my kids to grow up right, and right we got cool. here and it's like talk like that imagine living this area and they're like oh yeah i live in brentwood or oh yeah i live in franklin or yeah, I live in Nashville. Yeah. Like, what <laughs> it's not a country yeah. town anymore as much you know that's what not i was at all. when not, i moved here so yeah not at all i had no idea i mean we we had we had talked about leaving la for a while and um i would have never picked tennessee tennessee picked us Same you know here. the school <laughs> the school picked the school picked us and the rest of it was chips fall as they may and they've fallen so well for us we love the area and uh my wife is from san diego really uh, and and you know in la for a long time uh uh chula vista okay cool chula vista yeah but lived all over and then lived in in la for the last you know couple decades and and uh and so we we would have neither neither of us would have picked tennessee if we were just picking a place to go but it picked us and and uh I mean, we can't say enough. The, 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 the economy has been great and the, the real estate has been great for us. And the, the, the neighbors, we live in a great neighborhood with great neighbors. And I thought I was going to be worried. I was worried about being landlocked. Uh, we found that there's an awful lot of lakes here and, uh, oh, yeah. and we get out on the lake and, and, you know, we, we, we enjoy it. We, we get to enjoy the region. Like it, it's just great. I, I, I have, you know, I can't say enough. It's green mm-hmm. you know, and we have deer and wild turkeys and, rabbits and owls and you know you name it in our yard armadillos which was weird to see (laughs) oh yeah right they're having a rough summer too man they're having a rough summer i've seen a lot of squished i know i never i never seen one and we're walking our dog outside yeah. And this weird thing runs by and my 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 older son was like what is that and i'm like it looks like an armadillo and i had to like yeah. google to see if that's what it was and then yeah after i yeah. saw some squish ones unfortunately but it's bizarre yeah. to see them. They are, they are getting squished <laughs> possums too i saw i saw a run of possums over the weekend that there was a half a dozen of them uh uh-huh. driving around over here where they got squished so uh, i'm sorry for the possum and armadillo population yeah, in this region not armadillo sure i'm a tough year but uh, yeah no it's great man it's great and my, my wife loves the weather she she loves the rain and we got our first uh uh our son and and, and my wife had never seen snow before this year here oh i heard it you know like we moved, real snowfall yeah it got pretty it, it it snowed pretty well right i mean over yeah the, really well yeah for reals yeah. so we moved it's funny like when every when it was dumping snow here and the windmills were frozen in texas we decided to move <laughs> the weekend following that yeah <laughs> so we yeah. left like the monday after everything was it, but like we kind of drove into everything melting which was nice i mean yeah. we missed yeah. all the water shortage and all that stuff and power yeah, right, outages yeah. and by the time we got to nashville or around the area they just had the snow piles kind of on the side of the <laughs> the cool. freeways and stuff so my kids got yeah. to go jump on the parking lot snow but we didn't get to see any fall so hopefully uh this Next, this winter this it'll winter, snow again hopefully. yeah yeah, it was really cool. I mean, they, they get one here every couple, three winters. Um, we had some friends that moved here a little before us, a couple of years before us, and they had a good a good snowfall their first winter. But That's it was cool. so great. I mean, our first our first sledding and our first snowball fight and our first snowman and yeah, and, uh, it was great Amazing. catching snowflakes on our tongues, all that little stuff, you know. 
that yeah, stuff that's, that's so cool. Yeah, you'd miss yeah. in Southern California because there's absolutely yeah. no seasons. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that was a concern though. The, the the no seasons thing was a concern, and it's been, yeah. you know, been no problem for my yeah. wife and my son to adapt. They love it. Yeah, so. we love it here too. It was the best thing for yeah. us. I'm, yeah, I want to know a little bit more about your coffee shop, real quick. Um, so how did you get into coffee? It was just something you wanted to do, and like, how oh, do you man, even start? I mean, since the late, I mean, nah. really, it was with my with my grandpa when I was growing up. He had um he had MS, and he was in a wheelchair most of my life, mm -hmm. and so he had to be really careful. Um, he had to be really careful what he put in his body, and caffeine was one of the things that he just wasn't supposed to do a lot of, mm -hmm. and and so he very he very much respected coffee and cherished it because it was something he really loved to drink but was limited so he uh when I was growing up I mean he had like one of those old Italian espresso maker things he and my grandma had that on their on their stove you know from an early age and they had you know the latest drip coffee maker and the latest French press and you know or, or, or a French press and so I, I was introduced early on of the different you know methods and then our parents were you know were coffee heads for sure. And, and always had the, the latest state of the art, Mr. Coffee that you could program and, you know, <laughs> that would practically walk the coffee into you in the morning. So we grew up every morning with, with, with the smell of coffee in the house. I mean, it was the first thing all of our days started with our whole childhood mm -hmm. and, uh, and then just, you know, my, my respect for the, for it. And then Seattle, you know, was kind of a, a leader at the forefront of, of espresso joints you know sure. we, i mean we, obviously starbucks <laughs> yeah starbucks and, right. and they weren't the only they weren't the only game in town they're they're the most successful business model for mm -hmm. espresso joints in the history of of the of the espresso joints you know but there was a there was other places and and everybody kind of had their own spot in their neighborhood after a while like like uh, you know at first everybody's like three dollar coffee that's nuts you know but um we all kind of had our spot. If we liked it, if you liked espresso, then, then you have that spot down the block. Certainly when I lived in New York, that was like that. And, and, uh, I had a spot when I lived in Seattle that I went to every morning and I played my guitar, sat on the sidewalk. And, you know, I wrote some of my first songs sitting over a, a big old pile of espresso, you know, and, and, and playing at a, at a coffee place. And, you know, how cliche is that? You know, so it was always something on my mind. And I, I because I only drink espresso on ice. So I, I, I want a good tasting espresso because it's very potent. It has a very mm -hmm. distinctive taste and it's, you know, it, it can go, it can be bad espresso really quick. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not just because you run it through that machine makes it magic, you know? So there's a, there's a lot to it. So over the years, I just learned more and more about it and then really started studying the things I didn't know about it really hard um and just it, it was sort of groomed myself to do this business mm -hmm. and and then it finally came around where where you know i had the means and the time and the location and a new life here in tennessee and it just sort of the, the you know the stars lined up and, and w you know it came together really easily for us it seemed like a very smart natural thing to do and so so I named it after my grandfather and his brothers, who mm -hmm. my grandfather was huge influence in my life. And uh, and his brothers, two of his three brothers, uh, you know, I grew up with them. One of them I'm named after. The other one was, wow. you know, just, you know, a fixture in my life. I mean, I, I used to play this guy. He was in his mid 70s and I was in my 20s and he was the senior champion of Spokane in racquetball. Really? Uncle Harvey. And, yeah. That's and rad. He would take me out. We'd go over to the University of Washington intramural building and he would mop the floor with me and he was 73 and it didn't wow. even break a sweat. And there was this mezzanine up on top where you could watch players. And by the time we'd finished, the whole thing would be just packed with people watching this old man just beat the <laughs> crap out of me. And, you know, so these these guys, I mean, the, the Cornell brothers were they were my guys. You know, my grandfather was my guy. He was he was like my dad. And uh, so I it's an homage to them. Of it. you know obviously my obviously my brother chris and uh it's just it, it was all just so natural and it just came together so nicely and our our logo and our brand and our you know i'm, I'm able to work with a uh a really great uh i partnered with a really great roaster here and uh and we roast together and we source beans that are specific to to our needs and and, and small batch so we we get you know we have relationships with with some farms and relationships with some smaller brokers and we get some great stuff. We, we pay yeah. a little more for it. 
but it's worth every nickel because I didn't reinvent the wheel with this thing, man. But mm. I, you know, so it's my goal to do a good job with it. And I know what a good coffee should taste like a good drip coffee or a good, a good cold brew or a good espresso. I, I know what they should taste like. And I, I'm confident that that's what we're doing here. I'm very, very happy about it. Very proud of it. it. And you have you, cause you have coffee from all over. I mean, Ethiopia, Brazil, yeah, yeah, El Salvador, yeah. it looks like Peru. I mean, yeah. is that sourced that way? Like, do you have to, yeah, well, the, the, we had a Guatemalan that we've been using for uh, cold brew and for drip a little bit. And it's because it's small batch and they're smaller farms and, mm -hmm. and the relationships that we have the Guatemala season. I mean, we're, we're at the end of that season. It, it, we're at the end of that harvest. So mm -hmm. it'll come back around the Guatemala in about six months. So now we've shifted and replaced that uh, for our cold brew with an El Salvadoran that also makes a great drip coffee, but, but that's what we're able to do. We're able to, you know, we're able to rotate. We have like eight or 10 different, varieties and countries and farmers and brokers and you know that that we can then when the guatemalan runs out now we can get the el salvadoran and then we just we just put a, a costa rican that we're able to get for a while awesome. um a, a smaller batch um we just put that on our menu um we have a, an ethiopian that just changed to a natural washed and uh that we're using for our drip coffee so we're, we get to enjoy uh, some some variety by strictly by necessity and and it's working great. You know, it's, it's working great for us. The Costa Rican's great. The El Salvadoran is a, a farm, a family that's the sixth generation of the wow. same family that's, that's farming these beans in El Salvador. I mean, that's great, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that. It's the same, same vibe I have doing business in my community where I hang out, where I live, where I work, you know, mm -hmm. we do everything here in Nolansville because it's just around the corner from where we live. And I love that. I love to, I always did business that way. No matter where I was living, I like to use the local place that's near my house. That's going to see my face and know my name, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping to establish here. And so far it's gone pretty well. I love that. And are you working? You, I mean, you must be, my wife ran into you. You must be there pretty often. So I'm here a lot right now. You. I, yeah. I have a really small staff and I use them sparingly because you know, I don't want to ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done, in, including, you know, what go clean the toilet if it needs to be done. You know, mm -hmm. I just like to know everything about it and, and be able to to uh, knowingly direct people to do things without without, you know, being overbearing and, and say, hey, I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, I, you know, I know what it takes to fix that or clean that or what we have to do to make that happen. And and so. Um, I'll probably do this another couple months. Um, we're shopping for a second location. And when that comes online, then, then I'll, uh, you know, I'll be there busy developing that spot and I'll, I'll give this spot a little bit, you know, I'll, I'll let the staff get more involved, but for right now, I'm happy to be here. My wife comes down on Saturdays and works with me, which is just, um, it's great. It's amazing. That's awesome. You know, she well, loves, I'll have to take my wife down there on a Saturday so we please, can all. Please, please, yeah. Because <laughs> she already had a chance to experience it. I haven't been there yet, so yeah. I need to get out there. Yeah, that was early on, too. That was the first. We weren't here. We, we weren't open very long when, when I met your wife. Yeah, and she, like I said, she loved it over weeks. there. Um, cool. That's so you can, buy, you can buy the coffee online on your website on CornellBrothersCoffee.com. Yep. Yeah. And is that, can we you have, buy it if you're – where do you ship all around the U.S., or how does that work? We actually just uh, – night before last we changed our uh, our web store platform to shopify and we are now able to ship internationally wow that was why we changed we had a different platform and and the international shipping was a real puzzle and so we um we shift to sh we switched to shopify we we released a couple of new beans the costa rican and the el salvador and we and we now are able to uh offer um international so that's awesome it, it, it's yeah it's cool because uh through social media, um, I, I have a lot of people that I interact with that are, you know, out of the country, South mm -hmm. America, Australia, you know, I'm, I'm big sure. in Australia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. No, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Cause, and the support is just, you know, the support that we've received from, from fans of my music, fans of my brother's music, um, fans in general, you know, people in general, people come to the shop to pay respect um, you know, the people drive three, four hours from Kentucky so they can have a cup of coffee That's and so say, cool. Hey man, we want to, we want to support you in this. I mean, we've had, I've had people come in from Indiana and people come in from 
Ohio and people come, you know, from all across the country to just, you know, get a cup of coffee, show support, pay respect to the, to, you know, to the memory of my brother, or the family name, whatever it might be, you know, unbelievable, you know? Yeah. It, it's chilling for me. It's unbelievable. I will say I had a chance, my wife and I had a chance to meet your brother once and he was so sweet and he signed a record for us. And it was just like, such a moment like he he came yeah. i've met a lot of a lot of uh you know big music artists in my day in this business and just meeting him like yeah. he just had this presence where you're like yeah, yeah you just knew how like impactful he was and like i mean when we yeah. met him we were just like it, it, most of my wife and i were like you that was like <laughs> it was weird like it's hard to explain i can't even explain it to you yeah. but it was just like uh, he- He's a good man. He's a, he's a good man. And, and, uh, you know, we miss him every day. Mm -hmm. Love him, love him and miss him every day. Yeah. He was, yeah. So he touched so many people, lives of so many people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's so, um, on a lighter note real quick, are you, you said you got to play, you played the opening of the, of the, I did. I did. We did a little sound system. Little sound system. I mean, why not coffee house? It's kind of where music was invented. Wasn't it? I mean, it was, uh, yeah we're gonna do it more often that was gonna um, ask you we, is that something you're gonna continue yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna we wanted to get our our feet wet a little bit before we bit off more than we could chew but that is on the uh that's on our list you know priority list um in fact i got a call with a guy today who uh who's gonna help me with the sound system so we'll just put a little system in there that's sort of you know out of the way and uh a little stage and there's p i mean it's nashville man I was you gonna know? say you can I mean, get some could, big people to come in there. I'm sure, really oh my easily. God. I mean, I'm, I'm in my <laughs> truck in the parking lot. By the time I walk back across the parking lot, I'll run into somebody. You know, that's, so that's awesome. the way it is. Then, you know, um, yeah. There's, you know, there's a. We had that that night of our opening, we, or that day of our opening. We had uh, there's this band here, Bennett Hall Band. These three sisters. The oldest one I think is 13, and the youngest is seven. Wow. And they play around. They've opened. They've opened for some big country artists. They do. A little cover set you know and and they're amazing and so you know we'll, we'll do stuff like that and and you know and i'll play and and you know i've got, i got a buddy up the street whose dad was uh elvis's bass player my friend oh, wow. uh darren darren chef his dad was jerry chef and so darren you know i mean he's got his finger in music and knows a lot of folks and you know my wife's in the business um it just seems like a natural thing to do you know, and it's Nashville. Everybody wants to hear music here. So yeah. um, the space lends itself to a really open, high, you know, high 20 foot ceiling place. So it's, uh, you know, it, it lends itself to it. It's or actually, I think they're more like 30. It's really high anyway. Um, it sounds good in there. I sounded good in there. You know, if I sounded good in there, who will, every, it's, you can make anybody sound good in there. You know, <laughs> so it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we look forward to it. That'll be up and running, and we'll we'll make an announcement when that happens. But I'm looking forward uh, to it. I think I we'll can't wait, it. and I I'm gonna yeah. come. I'm I mean we're gonna we'll be there right. soon soon sooner than like later cool. uh, <laughs> to come say hello That's to you, good. and 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 maybe we'll come on a Saturday, you and your wife, and uh, That'd like be I said, great. my wife She's... loved it, and I cannot yeah. wait to to have it check it out myself. Cool. Great. And I appreciate you doing Great. this, Peter. I mean, this has been so awesome. My pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's my honor and privilege uh, to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more question for you before I let you yeah, get man. back to work. Yeah. <laughs> I want to yeah, know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh, man. Perseverance. Okay. Perseverance. Just stick with it, you know? I mean, I did it for a long, long time before I felt like I, I, I was uh, a success at it, you know? And just keep going. Don't don't hesitate to reinvent yourself if it ain't working and collaborate. I learned a lot through collaboration and uh, um, keep pushing yourself, you know, keep pushing yourself. If you're a guitar player, pick that guitar up every day, man. And don't be don't be constrained by the rules. Just make noise. You will find your own noise. It's amazing, you know, and that's so gratifying. Bring me the best words.